Recently, the internet was briefly lit ablaze by the fact that scientists announced that an asteroid could have been on a direct collision course with the Earth. I know. Finally! Yes! Yes! Bring on the asteroid. Let it all burn. <laughs> Hell, let's just wipe the slate clean, reset the evolutionary chessboard, as it were. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't know what got into me. Anyway, carrying on, the asteroid known as 2022 AE1 was originally observed as having the potential to impact with the Earth on the 4th of July in 2023. We're going to talk all about it. I'm Eric Malachite, and this is Science Get. Scientists have since updated those calculations, and sadly it won't be hitting us next year. Even if the asteroid did hit the Earth, however, it would not lead to an extinction event, as it's only 54 to 120 meters across, or 177 to 393 feet across. So unless this thing is traveling faster than any asteroid has ever traveled before, going where no space rock has gone before then it is seriously unlikely to cause any major damage to the Earth or cause an extinction event. What we have here, though, is a potential city killer, and that is still significant. Although with that latest NASA report that suggests that we could probably nuke a large asteroid up to two weeks before impact and avoid a decent amount of the damage, I'm not sure how significant that really is. A comet between 5 to 10 kilometers across that we estimate came from the Oort cloud and using Gauss's method of orbital determination and the average astrometric uncertainty of 0 0.04 whoa, 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 whoa. The hell is so fun. bored just tell us what it is I sit corrected bureaucracy that's the real threat am I right you might be wondering why the sudden flip in narrative surrounding 2022 AE1 that's actually pretty interesting the first seven days of observations of 2022 AE1 suggested an increased probability of impact in 2023. But for the following week after those initial observations, astronomers were kept in the dark as the full moon became so bright that it blocked any and all observations of the asteroid. It wasn't until the full moon event was over that they were able to fix the ESA's Near Earth Object Coordinator Center's focus on 2022 AE1 again. The second set of observations showed a steady decrease in the probability of an impact in 2023. In fact, 2022 AE1's short-lived stint on the ESA's risk list has come to an end as well, as, you know, it's been removed from it. While we might be safe, for now, this is fucking science get. So let's load up Universe Sandbox and smash this fucking thing into the Earth at the speed of fucking light. What happens when a 70 meter wide asteroid is accelerated to the speed of light and slams into the Earth? Does it go to plaid? Um, no, apparently it just crashes the game. Well, let's try this again, and again, and again. Hmm, that's not right. It should be causing way more damage than that. Apparently, nothing happens when you slam this thing at the speed of light into the Earth, according to Universe Sandbox. 
I'm guessing it's broken right now. Let's move on. Alright, so light speed won't work for whatever reason. Maybe my poor aging computer can't handle the stress of those relativistic speeds. Who knows? Let's see what happens when we smash a 70 meter wide asteroid into the Earth at 40 kilometers per second. Okay, that didn't really do much. That is a nice dust cloud around the Earth, though. Now let's punch that speed up to 100 kilometers per second. That's sure to do some damage, right? Well, no, apparently not. Am I doing something wrong here? This used to be so easy. All right, let's lower the speed dramatically. And it doesn't really do that much. While the asteroid really should have destroyed the Earth when it slammed into it at light speed, it's possible that it's just too small to cause any real damage in other cases. But then again, the game could be on the fritz after an update or something. I don't know for sure. But you know who does know for sure? The ESA. And as a matter of fact, they've got a whole risk assessment list for the most hazardous asteroids in our solar system. Let's take a bit to see how that works. Asteroids and comets are rated with something called the Torino scale. This scale tracks an asteroid's risk factor. The scale looks something like this. Objects are rated from 0 to 10. A 0 means that there is no present risk of impact, i.e. we're in the clear. A 1 means that the object will pass the Earth as predicted and poses no danger to the Earth. Though values 2 through 4 are where things get a bit more dicey, as objects ranking in this range require more attention by astronomers. A 2 means that the discovered object will likely make a close approach to the Earth, but not one that will be cause for concern. An impact is highly improbable, but astronomers will be watching it close all the same. You know, for science. A3 leads to a close encounter. Astronomers will be watching that object very closely. This also means that the probability for a collision is more than 1%, and there is a potential risk for the object causing some serious destruction, at least at the local level. So think city killer. A4 is similar, but instead of a city killer, we're talking about an object that could cause regional damage. If you recall, we did a video on an asteroid which would probably be classified as such recently. This asteroid hit the East Coast and shaped the Chesapeake Bay millions of years ago, setting the East Coast on fire in the process. That's fun to think about, right? A5 is a close encounter which could lead to significant regional damage, or devastation even. If the object is 10 years or more out from impacting us, then governments can plan a deterrent strategy. However, while this sounds similar to the previous rank on this scale, I believe this is for objects that have a significant probability of hitting the Earth. A 6 refers to a close encounter with a large asteroid or comet with the potential to cause devastation on a global scale. Though in order to qualify as a 6 on this scale, the potential damage would need to be classified as unknown as well. So, an unknown factor, I guess. At this rank, a deflection or countermeasure operation would need 30 years worth of notice before suspected impact time. A 7 would mean an object that would absolutely cause catastrophic damage to the planet 
and it would be a very close encounter. The key word here is unprecedented. Such an event, even if it didn't hit the Earth, would still be culturally significant. It's at this level that international contingency plans would need to be underway and would require constant monitoring of said object until an impact could be determined for certain. The last three ranks on the Torino scale, 8 through 10, are all for collisions that are an absolute certainty. 8 means that this collision could cause an impact over land or sea in an area that could cause tsunamis to wash over the Earth. These events are rare, but not uncommon, happening once every 10,000 years or so. 9 refers to a collision that would cause unprecedented regional devastation and also considers the possibility for land and sea slash ocean impact that could lead to the propagation of tsunamis. These events only occur once every 10,000 to 100,000 years. And finally, A10 on the Torino scale refers to an impactor that is not only 100% certain, but one that could threaten the future of civilization on our planet. These events are not common, meaning that they happen once every 100,000 years to, well, much less often than that. Think on the scale of millions of years. Apart from the Torino scale, there is also the Palermo scale, which suggests that objects rating as a negative 2 to 0 on that scale demand that careful monitoring by astronomers is necessary. However, any positive value on the Palermo scale is a serious cause for concern. Initially, it was this scale that was used to rank asteroid 2022 AE1, putting it at a score of negative 1.50. Now, this is a fairly unique situation. As a society, we've become accustomed to potential impact events being reported in the media fairly regularly. But these are mostly reported by tabloid journalists and, you know, occasionally a mistake by, say, the New York Times or something. You know, gotta sell newspapers somehow. But I don't think we've ever gotten a window into the procedure that might follow if something were actually, honestly, and truly going to hit us. Alarmingly, it would probably look a lot like this announcement. I.e., it'll be simple and to the point. And then it'd probably be followed by this. The civil authority has issued a civil danger warning. Due to the impact of a large asteroid, most of the west coast is uninhabitable. <laughs> couldn't resist. EAS alerts are tight. That's all I've got for you today. But real quick, before we end this episode of the show, some of you know that I'm launching a new YouTube channel devoted to Lovecraftian analog horror. The first in progress video was previewed in a recent live stream for the channel, and I'm really excited for the launch, and it seems a lot of you are too. I've put together five videos so far, and we'll be launching the channel once we have 10 videos finished altogether. In the meantime, I'm releasing a series of fake radio broadcasts that will give hints at certain aspects of this analog horror series. You can check these out by signing up to my fiction newsletter. As always, if you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz. And wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboys.